Hey guys, I'm Steve Freeman. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna talk all about getting the highest and best quality audio for your videos. I'm gonna tell you what I'm using now, some of the other systems that I have, and what my favorite is. So don't go anywhere, I hope you enjoy the video. Hey guys, I'm Steve Freeman. Welcome back to another video where today we're gonna to talk all about how to get the best quality audio for your videos. Before we do that, if you like today's video, don't forget, drop a like on the video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And I would love to hear your comments down in the comment section. Let me know what you're using, what you've had good results with and success, and as well as the things that you didn't like at all, because there are some that I don't like at all. So feel free to put it in the comment section down below. All right, let's jump into it. I have seen it on multiple YouTube videos all over YouTube, people talking about how they get the best quality audio for their videos. And it seems like everybody's got a different opinion. And I'm of the opinion that whatever works for you, works for you, and that's the best system for you. But I know that as you start to increase the quality of your videos, both from a camera and lens and recording aspect, you also want to increase that quality of your audio to go along and match the video as well. I've even seen a lot of people talk about when people are watching YouTube videos that they will forgive poor video quality, but poor audio quality makes more people click off of a video than anything. And there's actually a lot of data and analytics to back that up. If you don't have great audio for your video, people are not going to stick around. They're not gonna watch, they're gonna click off and go somewhere else. So always keep in mind that as you're increasing your quality of your video content, also it's very important to make sure that you are just as equally increasing the quality of your audio to go along with that video as well. I think it also makes a huge difference of what you actually plan to do with your channel. There's kind of two different aspects to think about this. You've got professional filmmakers and videographers, and then you've got uh, YouTubers who might just be making YouTube channels. And there are different varying levels of audio equipment that go with each one of those. Let's take, for example, if you are going to just be doing YouTube videos and you're going to be doing vlogs or reviews or whatever it is that you might do on your channel, you may not need a professional filmmaking audio setup. You may want one, and at some point, you may work yourself up to that point, but you don't necessarily need that. If you're gonna be doing YouTube videos, maybe a Rode Video Mic Go is good for you, or a Rode Video Mic Pro. I know Deity's got some new microphones coming out that are supposed to be great. So the first thing you need to do is identify what kind of content you're going to be making. Once you make that decision, then you can go down the rabbit hole of figuring out which microphone is best for you, which microphone and audio system is best for you. Do you want something that easily fits on the camera that plugs right into your camera's mic jack to where you don't have to sync audio in post. Or maybe you want something that gives you a little bit more flexibility and you don't mind syncing that audio in post because let's face it, whether you're using Adobe Premiere Pro or Adobe Premiere CC, whatever it is now on the thousandth evolution of Adobe Premiere, uh, which makes me wanna chuck my machine out the literal window every time I'm editing a video, or Final Cut, those of you uh, using Final Cut, both of the systems, most all of the systems now, have it very simple to highlight and select your tracks in your editor and synchronize those to one track or the other. So editing uh, post and syncing audio and post to your video is not as difficult as it used to be. That being said, Maybe you do want a little bit different of a system and you don't mind editing it in post and that opens you up to a whole other world of audio equipment as well. Now myself, I've probably done exactly what you did. I started out with a Rode Video Micro uh, mounted to the top of my Sony a6500. That's where all of it started. And that gave me great audio quality for what I was going to be able to do, especially if I was within two to three feet of the camera, within from the microphone. That picked up great. It's great for vlog style things. And along with that can go the, the Video Mic Pro. There's been several, several evolutions of those come along since. For blogging, if you're gonna be right near the camera, 
those mics are gonna do you very well. They're, they're gonna pick up the audio great, they're gonna sound great, you can work with them in post and really make them sound good. But if you're gonna be beyond two or three feet away from the camera, you're going to want something completely different, which is what I did. When I left the Rode Video Micro, I went to a lavalier system. I went with the Sennheiser AVX. And I absolutely love this for a uh, wireless system, a lav system. Um, it sounds phenomenal. The range on it is great. So you can have your camera here and if you wanna go and walk around a room or walk downstairs, walk back upstairs, or let's say you're planning on going to some B-roll and you wanna read something, you can get up, you can look around and that audio is gonna sound phenomenal no matter where you are in relation to the camera because you've got that lavalier microphone and it's sitting right here and it sounds really good. Um, one of the things I do, I've never used the clip that clips it on because I don't like to see it. So a lot of times I will tape it uh, to the inside of my shirt, either using like gaffer's tape or even some stuff that my daughter gave me that she found at Ulta, which was some body tape or something, which was pretty cool and worked really well. So a lot of times I will use my Sennheiser AVX system because it plugs straight into the camera. Uh, I am a huge Sony fan. I've made no bones about that. I have every camera that Sony has made. We're shooting this video right now on an A7 III uh, with an Atomos uh, Ninja Flame recorder. Um, so the AVX system plugs straight into that and I know I'm gonna get great quality audio. So if you're looking for a LAV system, it is, a, it is expensive. I think it comes in around $799. So it is an investment. It's something that you're going to have to invest in. Again, just as important as nobody thinks about what they're gonna spend on the camera or the, the lenses, because that's okay. Then everybody seems to have a problem when it comes to spending real money and investing real money in your audio. But I promise you, it is not money wasted and it will be well worth the dollar spent. The better quality audio you have, the better your videos are gonna turn out. Now, I've been using the Sennheiser AVX system for about uh, a year and a half now, and I loved it. But as I get into doing different styles of video and even making some films and being on film sets, I realized that I wanted something a little bigger. Uh, I wanted something that uh, allowed me to have more channels, uh, to record more simultaneous channels of audio at one time. And I, of course, did what everybody does. I go to YouTube and I start doing some research. There are a lot of options out there, but here's what I chose to go with. And this is what you're listening to right now. I chose to go with the Zoom F6 Field Recorder. Now, when you're going with a system like this, like the Zoom F6 or uh, another recorder that is capable of providing phantom power, you're going to want to use a shotgun microphone. I chose to go with the Rode NTG3. It's right up here. It's just out of frame. Um, it sounds phenomenal. I absolutely love this microphone, especially paired with the Zoom F6. I've used it with some other recorders, even some of the earlier Zoom products, and I didn't like it as well. One thing that I like a lot about this Zoom F6 is the preamps are very pristine and they are very clear. Now, listen, audio is very important to me. I make my living as a songwriter and a multi-platinum selling record producer. We're in my recording studio right now. So audio is very important to me. Preamps are very important to me. The analog to digital and digital to analog conversion is very important to me. So I love the preamps inside this F6. They're very pristine, they're very clear, they're very crisp, and they don't add any color 
whatsoever to the sound that's being recorded to the internal memory card. All right, I wanna make sure that we are technically correct, so I'm gonna run over some of the key features of the Zoom F6. The Zoom F6 multi-track field recorder is a six input, 14 track field recorder. It's got high quality microphone preamps with up to 75 dB of gain. It has reliable connectivity thanks to locking Nutric XLR inputs, which is very important. You've got multiple power options, including four AA batteries, an AC adapter, or you can even attach a Sony L-Series battery to power your Zoom F6. It's got excellent dynamic range with 42-bit float recording. It's got time code capability. Even look-ahead hybrid limiters will prevent signal spikes from ruining your recordings. It's got dedicated headphone output for monitoring your recordings in the field. Plus, it's got SD, SDHC, SDXC card slot and supports up to 512 gigabyte memory cards. You can also operate the Zoom F6 as a six in four out USB audio interface. It can also be used as an audio interface while simultaneously recording to the SD card at up to 48 Hertz resolution. You can also use the free Zoom F Control app for iOS for remote transport control, file naming, and metadata entry. And like I said before, it's got the CMF6 mounting bracket that's included. Of course, there's phantom power on board, which the Rode NTG3 does require phantom power. So you've got phantom power built in to the Zoom F6, which just helps and makes everything nice and easy. You don't have to have microphones and extra batteries and all of that. So once you've got set up, you're good to go. You go through the settings. Make sure if you are going to be using a microphone that requires phantom power, there is a setting inside the settings for your microphone that is mic mic, pH, and line. If you're using a microphone that requires phantom power, make sure that you use the setting that is mic, pH. If you just plug it in and are using mic and you have a microphone that needs 48 volt power, phantom power, you're not gonna see anything moving on the meters. It has to be set on mic, pH. pH stands for phantom. That lets you know that you're using phantom power. Another thing that I'll say about the Zoom F6 that I like is the menu is very easy to navigate. All of the buttons are right there on the front. And like I said, the menu is simple. You can walk your way through it, get it set up the way that you want it, and then leave it. That's kind of the way that I've been using it lately is I got it set up the way that I wanted it and I really haven't touched it since. I know that I can turn the camera on, I can turn the F6 on, I can hit record, and we are good to go. One of the main things that some of you may not think is a big deal at all, but I actually really liked it and I thought it was pretty cool, is the F6 comes with a mounting bracket so that you can screw your uh, mounting plate, your base plate for your camera that fits in your Manfrotto tripod or your Swiss Arca plate, it comes to where you can mount that to the bottom of the F6 recorder. Then on top is a built-in plate that your camera sits down on top of and you can screw via a quarter 20 your camera directly to the top of the F6 so that you can stack them on top of each other, slide them into your tripod, and everything is nice in a nice, neat form factor where you've got your tripod, then you've got the F6, your camera on top of the F6, and then I've got my uh, uh, Ninja Flame uh, recorder, monitor recorder mounted to the camera. So everything is a nice, simple setup. If you need to move the camera, you don't have five different tripods you're moving around or mic stands or any of that. You've got, everything's mounted to your camera. So everything is right there on your tripod. You can simply pick the tripod up and move it to get a different angle and it's not gonna change anything. I really like it a lot. For me, I don't know about you, but Sometimes I get frustrated when I'm thinking about making a video because I want everything to be perfect. I want everything to be right. And sometimes I get too focused on the little things and they make me procrastinate and they actually keep me from shooting video. So the simpler that I can make a process, the better it is for me. I also believe that because of that, and it takes some of the mental stress off of me off of shooting the videos, the simpler the process I can make it, the better quality video that I'm ultimately going to make. And I can tell you that recording my audio this way has made it very simple, 
almost stress-free and has almost really, in a way, made me enjoy making videos again. So for me, the simpler something is to use, the more likely I am to use it and enjoy it and make better content. So if you wanna get better quality audio for your video, let me recap just a little bit. Before you buy anything, decide what it is that you're going to be doing. What kind of videos are you going to be making? And then pair the audio solution with the actual reason that you are going to be shooting videos. If you're gonna be doing vlog style stuff, then you're gonna be fine with something that is camera mounted like a Rode VideoMic Pro or a Video Micro or one of the new Deity microphones. There are a lot of companies coming out now with on-camera microphones that sound really good. And if that's what you're gonna be doing, if you're gonna be staying within two to three feet of the camera, or you're gonna be closer than that, you're gonna be vlogging, you're gonna be just fine with one of those. If you wanna take a step forward, maybe a step up, you wanna go with the lavalier system, I highly recommend the Sennheiser AVX. It's what I personally use when I'm using a lav system. I also know that Rode uh, makes a series of really good lavalier mics and wireless systems, so definitely you wanna check out Rode. Deity is a company that is coming up and they've got some great solutions as well. But if you wanna go a step further than that, and you wanna have a shotgun microphone set up and an external audio recorder, I highly recommend the Zoom F6, especially if you think that you're ever going to need more than one, sometimes more than two, and up to six audio inputs. I don't think you can do any better than the Zoom F6. There are a lot more expensive routes that you can go, but I'm telling you, I think the Zoom F6 is definitely the way to go, and I know it's how I'm going to be recording the audio for my videos for quite some time. One of the most important things to remember, like I said at the top of the video, the analytics show and the data shows that people will click off of a video that has poor audio. They will forgive poor video quality, but they will not forgive poor audio quality. So don't make your videos with poor audio audio, whether it's an on-camera solution, a wireless LAV system, or even a wired LAV system, or a complete outboard system like the Rode NTG3 and a Zoom product like the F6, you can't go wrong. You're going to get the best quality audio for your video. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for another video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you're using for your audio down in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.